When I was growing up in the 90s, magazines were always some of my favorite things to pick up and read, namely gaming related. Those were among some of my favorites to be able to get sneak peeks and other gaming goodies from way before the advent of the internet with YouTube and even online walkthroughs. Even though there are tons of books that gave you so much info that was out there, one that comes to mind to most gamers is Nintendo Power Magazine. A full-on overload of everything Nintendo via a monthly subscription where people would get the inside scoop on everything that was new and exciting at the time which lasted all the way till 2012. While there are various lookbacks of the magazine from channels like NES Complex, Gamester Anyone's Nostalgia Holic channel, and even an AVGN episode where they had a quick look back of it, I figure why not? Let's give it a go and see how far we can take this. You've watched the Uncommon Valley, now it's time to get the power. Our Nintendo Power Retrospective series covering all 285 issues. We begin our journey with, you guessed it, issue number one released in summer of 1988. While the Nintendo Fan Club newsletter was Nintendo's first foray into getting news out there for the fans, it would actually be Nintendo Power that would truly become the go-to source for all future news. And what a way to get things going with what many regard as the most recognizable gaming cover of all magazine releases. Choosing Super Mario Bros. 2 was a great choice of games to get people excited as it was one of the most highly anticipated titles of that year. Among other titles that they covered over for this issue was the first Double Dragon, Gauntlet, the original Contra, and even Wheel of Fortune. Opening up the magazine and we get the first official adverts of the day, Nintendo Power Line. This was essentially their hotline to be able to get helpful tips and tricks for certain NES games and lasted all the way up till 2010. Though, as a nice throwback when they released the NES Classic, they would actually bring this back for the hotline for only a few days with it being all automated calls. There also was a full-on walkthrough to play the second quest in the original Legend of Zelda. Which was actually nice to be able to hold people off until the second one, Adventure of Link, would be released four months later when this issue was released. I like how they also included the full map for the second quest in case you happen to get lost, a nice added feature to new players. The poster that was included for the first issue was all baseball themed and has some questionable choices for it namely for titles such as Bases Loaded and RBI Baseball, but MLB by LJN isn't one that I recommend keeping on here. But forget all that, Nintendo apparently has their own official baseball team, or to be assumed that they are because the jersey it looks like it says Nintendale. I know the jersey is supposed to be bending and creasing in different ways, but the name on the jersey just looks misspelled. Also, apparently Nintendo is against Gotham because Batman's look logos being shown in the sky. For Counselor's Corner, this was more of a way for players to get some of their video game questions answered for certain games that they had trouble with. Some of the notable titles this month are Ghost and Goblin's Easy Firebrand Cheat and Level Select Code, to going one-on-one -on -one against Mike Tyson and Punch-Out. There is a separate section in the magazine called Classified Information, which you could honestly put with the rest of the Counselor's Corner. When Nintendo Power first started, it ran a comic series called Howard and Nestor. It's neat to note that how Howard was a real person who worked for Nintendo, and Nestor would later get his own game the ill-fated Virtual Boy. These were nice additions for the magazine as you got to see what they were up to for that issue. For this one, Nestor was getting schooled by Howard Phillips with some video game secrets. And you can see that he wasn't a fan of that. The video short section would eventually be turned into Now Playing, and was a great way for readers to get a full-on display of what was new for that month. Some of my favorites for that month were Gunsmoke and Bionic Commando from Capcom, and even included a preview for Dragon Power, which was just a reskinned version of Dragon Ball that was on the Famicom over in Japan. They even referenced the show with the Eternal Dragon Shenron on the side, which honestly is cool. 
However, they gave him the generic trait of making him breathe fire. Another section called Pack Watch was what they called their preview section of what was currently being worked on from many developers. While they showed a bunch of stuff that would eventually get released, they would always tease certain games that would never make it to the US market. For example, they featured Chesterfield, which would play very similar to Zelda 2. Probably never got to see the release for that reason alone. Another one that never got released was Empire City 1931, which was a cursor-moving shooter from the arcades. Maybe it was because you were shooting down gang members, but something like Platoon and Robocop getting released is very confusing. I know that those are movies, but those were rated R. Kind of a weird choice to include, but moving on. When I started looking at this section, I was pleasantly surprised to see Dragon Quest 3 get shown off, whereas here in the States we only just got the first one and would have to wait another three years before getting our hands on it. But one of the things I never cared for the most was where they featured movies that were coming out and some of the actors' thoughts on Nintendo. It's one thing if that was actually in People and Time magazine, but not in a magazine that only fans of Nintendo cared for. So you could honestly just pass on this whole section altogether. The final thing to note about these issues is that they would include as much fan reputation as possible with the inclusion of the NES Achievers, Video Spotlight, and Top 30 sections. This is where Nintendo Power gave the power to the fans and allowed them to submit their scores for the month, and even vote for some of their favorite games that they were playing for that month also. We'll cover over each and every single month that they voted for and see how much of a difference it did take over time. Overall, the first issue of Nintendo Power was an accomplishment for Nintendo and will be a pivotal part in a lot of gamers' lives. It expanded a lot of what they were doing before with the fan club newsletter and cranked it up to the max. But yeah, great way to get people excited for what was to come.